Um, I want to talk about COVID and, you know, and this, you know, we've been thinking a lot about this and besides reading and listening and, and, you know, observing, it's just, you know, this is the first, you know, inter, you know global, you know, interrupter, you know, in our lives. Um, I think the last one it, you could fairly say was World War II, where, you know, everybody, but it, you know, individuals, families, communities, organizations, you know, nations have been impacted by it. And, you know, where I kind of think we are today, you know, we're kind of moving, moving out of the, out of COVID. Um, I did a little timeline, but um, go to the next slide. Is, you know, I think it's really important to look at you know, like who we are, who we were before COVID, in in terms of you know how we operated, how we thought about things, and then really acknowledge you know what your personal experience of COVID is. Um, if we were at a you know you know an offsite, we'd probably you know create a you know two or three hour whiteboard thing where everybody would put up, you know, organizationally, you know, who Toro was and 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 how you know COVID is is really affected us. Um and and then you know who we could be, right? Um, I think this is like acknowledging you know not sweeping COVID under the rug in the future as we make our plans is is not, I hate to use we're not healthy, but we've learned so much about interacting with each other, with, you know, how people, you know, view health, view, you know, office space, I mean, you name it, you know, you know, the, 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 you know teams in a lot of ways, you know, through teams, we have more intimate relationships because we see more people per day and actually, you know, talk to them one on one than we can in person. Um, but we also miss, you know, the camaraderie and the culture. So um, you can go to the next one. And and so I just I assert, and, and this is what started this whole thing is I'm really annoyed when I hear about going back to normal. I really think that because it was a you know a global interruption, there's no going back to normal. The, the normal can't be the same. And we, you know we have a really a permanent shift in what normal is. And you know, I always am happy when I hear new normal, but I think it's an opportunity for everyone, not only you know Toro as an organization about us personally is to kind of design what the new normal is. You know, the new normal for a lot of people is not going to be nine to five in the office. You know, it's, it's just going to be different. Um, and so, you know, I invite you to, to look at that. You can go to the next slide. I'm trying to get my two minutes done. Um, so I, I got a request for people. And, you know, I think the magic of requests is Requests can be declined, so you either can accept the request or you decline the request. Um, but really, you know, assess you know, who, who you were before COVID. You know, think through how COVID affected you, and then kind of articulate what you learned. Um, you know, and then you know, design what your new normal would look like, and then share share it with people. So when I sit and look at Toro, you know, going into COVID, we were at we had just finished our second full year. We, we had a lot of planning. We created a great team. We were, um, you know, projectoring, you know, as Steve and I had initially planned, maybe a little flatter, you know, than we wanted. Um, but we also were, you know, living with benefits and the constraints of bootstrapping a company. You know, you know, we did not go out and get a bunch of debt. We did not get investors. You know, Steve and I funded the company. And so 
you know, it was in some ways limiting our growth as well. You know, then COVID comes and, you know, a couple of great takeaways in my mind is one, is that our, our biggest market, the middle market, really took off. I think we we're just lucky um, because there was a flight to safety. You know, people wanted triple net. You know, they're, you know, trading out of apartments that were, they've been managing for occupancy for years where the tenants weren't paying. They had a zero basis and they were buying a Starbucks. And we did a lot of deals. The other thing that benefited us was really, you know, the PPP because it gave us enough cash to invest in our people, you know, you know through the period. And, 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 and that was lucky as well. And, you know, we sit and look at what our fourth quarter was, you know, this is all during COVID. You know, we have our best fourth quarter ever. We had our best January ever. And, you know, what it's allowed us to do is, you know, reinvest, you know, that success. And, you know, Harry's gonna talk about, you know, what we call Brahma 2.0, not Brahma, Toro 2.0 because you can't go back to normal, right? We have to go to Brahma Toro 2.0, is you know, really growing the advisory services team, which you know, we, if we were prior to COVID, we could not afford to do, right? Because of the luck of the triple nets, the you know, stimulus, you know, that kept everything going. And, you know, you know, we'll let Jack and Harry talk about this, but you know, by hiring these three fellows, you know, we're going to really be able to support a lot more volume from you guys. Also means we want a lot more volume from you guys. And, you know, we can expand, you know, you know 40% growth, either in volume or people. So it's, it's just something to look at, um, something I'm kind of passionate about. If anybody wants to talk to me about it, I mean, I'm open ears. Um, but you know, I highly recommend that you, you know, you acknowledge the impact of what we've gone through the last year. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Thanks, guys.